Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Beats from the True Wellness Center. I am your host, Kelly Kennedy. And on The Beats, as you know, we like to bring you the most up-to-date information, cutting edge with all the great practitioners and experts out there that we know from the bioregulatory approach that are really inciting our own innate intelligence and healing. And one of the things that has struck me over the years, um, as well as I am, is that healthy relationships is almost first and foremost to our health. And the first relationship is with ourselves. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about relationships and healthy relationships. And the first person we are going to bring on is my good friend, Sunshine Kate. And Kate is going to talk about yoni steaming and healing and spending time with our ourselves and listening to ourselves and what that's about. If you don't know what a yoni is, then you definitely want to listen to this episode. It's very deep in regards to understanding our own innate intelligence and how to listen to ourselves and the incredible wisdom that comes from within. And this is, you know, uh, she also does Linga steam. So this is both for men and women, but today you're going to hear about having a relationship with ourselves so that we can then engage and have healthy relationships with others. And then over the next couple of weeks, you're also going to hear from Alison Armstrong, who's an incredible author and educator that I have been really blessed to be able to interview and she's written many books. And then the week after that, you're going to hear um, more from Emily and she is going to be talking more about female health. So we have a, a great lineup for you. Enjoy this first of the three weeks of the episodes all about relationships with Sunshine Kates and check out the wisdom from here. So we're going to dive right in because I um, have introduced Katie already to our community and we're so happy to have her back. Katie and I met through Dr. Christine Schaffner and we did some retreats together and we will be doing more retreats together uh, called Female Frequency Upgrade. And when I first heard about Katie's work, I kept saying to Dr. Christine, like, well, so what does Katie do? And she's like, well, she, she does a lot of things, but she works and helps a lot of people understand their yoni. And I was like, oh, mm, it's great. What, what, what's a yoni, Christine? <laughs> and it really began, I didn't, I had never heard this word other than I had heard it a couple of times, but it never dawned on me it had anything to do with our health to be honest with you um you know just one of those things that we have to be brought to that awareness i'm sure if my husband's listening to this he's laughing but regardless uh i'm so happy to have katie on our uh episode of the beats today and joining us about you know so welcome katie mm, thank you kelly i'm so grateful to be here and to be connected with you so thanks for letting me connect with our our group so of course, let, tell, let's start off, let's tell them a little bit about you, how you got to where you are and how you're evolved into, for the, those that don't know you, let's like, let you tell your background a little bit and how you got to where you are. So it's ever evolving, ever changing. And what I've really found, what I'm transmitting out into the world has been through my own learning and reconnection with my body. My background is in nutrition and I studied natural medicine and very much operated from my mind space and wasn't fully connected to everything below my head. And for many years was unaware of how irregular my cycles were, some hormonal imbalance, disconnection to what I was ingesting and, and how my body was responding. So fast forward to a few more hats that I evolved to wear, including um, becoming certified in teaching yoga and then going into some aesthetics work that I hit this point where my body just started to develop cyst and I was passing out when they were bursting. And I remember this one night, I was back in Jersey. I'd been from Seattle, Colorado, back to Jersey. I passed out and I ended up in the hospital and it was a snowy night. So it was a big, <laughs> big, issue to get there and at that moment I realized that it wasn't going to be from my mind space that I was going to be able to resolve and reconnect with my body so I began to pray and go deeper into the guidance of 
where do we begin to connect? How do I begin to connect through my moon cycle? And so I met a naturopathic doctor. She was based out of Virginia at the time. And she had me read a book called Feeding Your Demons. And at that point, I was so resistant to it. But it was all about the emotions that we hold in our body. And sometimes they show up and they come through us and we move with them. But very often, how much is actually suppressed in the body? And so that was the first door that I began to open to, okay, so what's, what's in there? What can we work with? And then I started to work with castor oil packs over my lower belly and detoxing my liver. And then fast forward to a few more different explorations around, okay, let's work with some more hormonal support here. One day I was in a bookstore and I picked up this book called Wild Feminine. I didn't really look at it, went back to my apartment, put it on my bookshelf and weeks later, she just fell off. <laughs> Opened up to a page all about the ovaries and it was connecting to our ovarian energy. And then I really knew that was the true sign of, okay, let's go down, let's go down into this portal. Learned about yoni steaming and lo and behold, almost eight or nine years later, here I am where my body and I have such a different relationship, a beautiful connection where I have regular cycles. I've learned a lot about what I've really needed to bring in, how I've been able to create the space to clear out through some physical work, such as yoni steaming, which I'll be happy to share more about. And a lot about really connecting to the somatic relationship that we have within this sacred, sacred center. Um, and so my passion is really working with, we define yoni as the sacred seat of a woman's body. It's her whole pelvic bowl. So not just endocrine organs, the endocrine system, but also digestive health, urinary health, physical, mental, emotional, energetic bodies. And then for men, I also work with them around their lingam health. And lingam is their penis, their wand of light. And that really creates their portal for empowerment, for power, for vitality. And it's just incredible because this is something that we all, every single human on this planet can access, but the conditioning around this can be really suppressive in the way that we think it's sexualized or we need to have all of our physical organs in place in order to do this. And that's the exact opposite of what it is that we have this space within our body. And from here, it gives us, it invokes that invitation to come back in, to reclaim our own sovereignty and to see what our body really wants to share with us. So that is just like the shortest little <laughs> summary well, of where I've been going and, and where I am now. Well, thank you for that journey. And it really shed light in so many ways for me because I didn't know your whole story. Um, and the ovarian cyst part, you know, that we have in common that I, for those that have listened for a while, know that I had 30 ovarian cysts burst after the car accident in a 10 year cycle. And when I first started, um, the session that we did, the Yoni session, I remember sitting, like, I was so exhausted at that point. I had been like just running really hard for about eight or nine days, putting on you know, putting out content, putting out fires and doing what we do, but in a very intense way, more than usual. And I was exhausted, just beyond exhausted. And you're like, this is what you need. You need a Yoni steam. And as I sat there, I just thought to myself, as you were telling me a little bit about your story, then I was like, how did I escape knowing about Yoni seams when I had 30 ovarian cysts burst on me? And it's all about, you know, the pelvis and I've had so in the past issues with my pelvis that, you know, I had an injury to the thoracic area of in the car accident, but I really feel like what was unseen was the pelvis problem because the ovarian cyst started one month later. And I did a lot of research that it's about traumas <clears throat> to the pelvis can often either shift the fascia and literally snag an ovarian and cause kind of cystic eruptions, um, and, or the trauma, the emotional trauma. So, you know, and I, in the work that we do, we see so much self-abuse, sexual abuse, you know, emotional abuse of the sexes that it really plays a lot in that pelvic bowl. And there's just, oh, it's a well of information and a well of 
um, memory. And what I could not believe was, it was like she turned a button on, like everything she just says sounds very etherical and oh, wow, that sounds very, in theory sounds good, but how the hell does that happen? Here's how it happens. She goes, okay, what you need is a yoni seam. Sit here, um, take, you know, uh, expose your, your pelvis without skin or without clothes, expose the skin to the steam from this crock pot on this particular bench. And I'm like, okay, sure, Katie. So I sit <laughs> down and it was like a button was pushed and all this bleh came out of my mouth of all these deep seated emotions and feelings and things that I had not given awareness to or presence to or acknowledgement of for various reasons. And it all felt just so like, I remember saying to you at one point, like, does everybody just do this? Like they just sit here and then just like, you're a therapist for them as they just puke out all of their thoughts and feelings that they've had trapped inside their body. And it was such a shift for me um, on so many levels. And I, you know, such a gift to have that after feeling so exhausted, it like rejuvenated me on many levels. And it made me aware that I have to pay attention to my Yoni. And through that over the last few months, and, and some of you've listened to the last few weeks of podcasts have heard that my pace has changed. I I've been aware that I can't run at the level that I am that, you know, I was running in opposite directions almost than our foundation, bringing our, the two worlds back together. And really a lot of that started with the wisdom from within. And that's what this really is about is listening. I mean, you know, I know everybody's like, Oh, Kelly, you just talked too much. You didn't like Katie talk, but I, re I really want because this doesn't, you don't have to be in person. Like this is something that you can experience this therapy, which again is a huge gift for all those that are listening from a long distance that you can work with Katie long distance and have this experience because that's exactly what it is. It's an experience. It's an experience of going in, you know, no different than what Flo Prezzo offers from the, from the perspective of like, it's all about going in. You know, it's enough looking out and trying to find wisdom without all the wisdoms within. This is just centered huh, in a different area of the body where we have wisdom that I don't think we have honored. And, at, you know, when we first joined today, I was like, for those that aren't watching, like I have an orchid behind me. She's got this beautiful blooming flower behind her. I don't know what kind it is, but it's, you know, it's, it's about that, that wisdom coming from without blossoming from without. So, or within, from within. So, I mean, please speak more of it, tell stories, like take it away, Katie. But I just want to speak to how incredible the experience of Yoni was, which it seemed so incredibly simple. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to sit over these herbs steaming and I'm going to feel something like, I mean, you know, 20 years I've been doing this industry, but still I was like, Oh, herbs steaming over my body, but it's a frequency, right? And it whew, changed the frequency. It changes, shifts, transforms the frequency to, to begin to turn the listening from within, like you said. And the truth of our whole journey lies within this. It's the sacral center, but this whole portal of so much life and your experience was powerful because you had been so external for that busy time, holding space for others, just outward, being pulled in so many different directions at one time. And for the hour that we spent together, it was asking for you just to be there with, with your body, with the heat coming up mm -hmm. and to receive. And that is one of the biggest gifts that we can offer to ourselves so much of our lives, we're just, we're being overstimulated from our brains, not even just our wake states, but even in our sleep, how we're processing so much and integrating so much of our days that when we can actually give the space for our body to receive, the being has more healing, more wisdom than the doing in itself. Yoni steaming is something that is so ancient and it's recently become more well-known, not just in the States, but around the world. But we can track it back all the way to ancient China where women in royalty, they, it was a privilege for them 
to use mugwort and they would steam over it because it was believed that the mugwort activated their vi vital essence, their vitality and kept them very youthful. But it's also, I studied the ancient Egyptian, ancient African method where the beginning of that, women would squat over frankincense smoke and the resin, the smoke traveled up through their vaginal canal energetically all the way up the body to open up to crown wisdom. And so to create more of an intuitive sense, it's traced back to Central America and why women started to do this using medicine, plant medicine to work on the physical body, to work on the emotional body. It has so many, so many benefits. Physically, we bring more blood flow. We support lymph drainage. From my experience, it was helping to support really an anti-inflammatory focus with that and breaking up the cyst. The cyst I can trace back to what was not being expressed in my body emotionally, what I was not speaking outward, my boundaries honoring that space. Also the creative expression. And so it gives us that heat. It's almost like this light that illuminates the space within, but it's really mm -hmm. beneficial for regulating the menstrual cycle. I see a lot of women more than ever now with endometriosis and with fibroids. So with that, it's an indication of maybe a liver overload of hormones and the body not being able to, to clear out and balance. So when we can, I make specific herbal blends for each, each focus, each symptom that a woman might be speaking about um, and the herbs offer different properties. But so we can focus specifically on that. Fertility is an, another huge offering in not just a woman's body, but for men's health as well. For men, the steaming is so beautiful for prostate health, for hemorrhoids. And you think about- I'm just gonna ask about hemorrhoids. <laughs> yes, yeah. for women and men. So um, a lot of times postpartum women come in because of tearing, because of the hemorrhoids. But in general, we spend a lot of time sitting, right? We're in front of our computers, we're in our cars, we're contracted and that constriction blocks blood flow. For men, that engagement, that tight engagement, that the heat, it's so gentle. You're sitting on a stool. And again, we can do this at home. I did a, a Zoom call, actually it was a FaceTime call yesterday with someone where I had a steam pot, two yoga blocks and a blanket. And we made it the most accessible way for her to begin this initiation to come back in. Of course, if you have access to a, a chair, a steam chair or a throne, it's beautiful. I like to use crock pots because they're so manageable with regulating the heat. And then you're seated on top or squatting over it. And it's this gentle vapor that's carrying up the oils from the herbs, from the plants into the body. It crosses over through the tissue, moves into the blood system and the body knows where to take it. So it can work maybe for the menstrual cycle. But here's the other thing. I have a lot of women reach out and they say, well, you know, I don't have a uterus. I don't have my physical organs. It does not matter because the energetic body will still respond. It still operates as if all the physical organs are there. And the same thing with men, testicular cancer, prostate cancer. It's a way that we can bring that blood flow back in. When we have blood flow, we have more oxygen. We have more energy. And from the energy, we can bring more awareness into what's happening within. It's great for menopause. It's great for UTIs, for urinary health. I, um, I think back to a few years ago, I had this client who she was coming to me before this procedure that she ended up having a bit of her intestines removed. And so then we had to wait for a period of time and she came back in and she was still cycling. She was still having a monthly cycle and we made a very nourishing yoni blend. We did chamomile and lavender, just very, very soothing. And it just, it, created this heat, this experience where her body, she felt like she was finally able to unlock some of the, the tension that had been there since the surgery. And then she reached out about a week later when she started to bleed and she asked if it's normal to smell lavender. Her body took in so much. And from that, it was that release, but it's a reminder. It just, and it was a comforting feeling for her. It wasn't, I mean, she was curious of course in the beginning, but just to know the body's listening. When we offer it the space, the body listens when it's feeling open and spacious. Some clients come to me because they want to invoke a new vision on their journey. They want to take action. That's wonderful. The body also 
listens and responds when there's something that's stored there that needs to be released. Maybe it's the ending of a relationship, death, anything. It's a way to simply be held. And I picture the pot as a cauldron that we take in the nourishment, we take in the medicine, and it also can release back to the earth. And I teach about ritual as a practice too, because this truly is a ritual. It's connecting, it's ritual is taking the mundane and turning it into sacred, whatever it is. Just the fact of having conversation is ritual, right? It's, it's storytelling, it's exchanging. But with the ritual of a yoni steam or a lingam steam, it's sitting with your body to acknowledge all the experiences, all the life experiences. The body is so resilient. The soul is so resilient, but yet a lot can get trapped here. A lot that we don't address. And over time, that can lead to shame. That can lead to numbness. That can lead to disconnect. It could lead to discomfort. And so many people live in this state where they've just resolve to accept the discomfort. But when we can actively resume the, the position to, to take ownership, magic truly happens within the body. I, there's so much in the way. It's just, um, it, <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's such a simple practice, but yet anything is possible to, to explore within that. Well, you know, Everything you just mentioned, I'm sitting there going, and I have a little list, as Katie knows, that I've started when I work with clients and I'm like, oh, they need to do a Yoni steam. And I've started to create a little list in my office of clients that I want to talk to about doing this. But as that list was just read to me, and knowing what I know about the human body and where we trap emotions in the pelvis and the jaw, and, and how it felt like as I opened that up with the steam and the herbs, which I want to unpack a little bit, it, it, it allowed my voice, it allowed the, the fifth chakra to open as well. And it allowed that jaw to express how it felt. And so there was a relief of tension throughout the whole body. So sorry if you hear my dog in the background, she's, you know, chill out, Isha. So it's, it's like everybody could benefit from this. I really feel in the, in this century that of what we're dealing with, because there's such an assault to our inner wisdom and to shutting that down, as you said, and to really learning the skill to go in and open that up and hear and listen to what it's saying to allow those emotions to be released. Cause we do trap emotions. And, um, when, when people, you know, there's so many different ways to go with it. And what I want people to understand from the beats is that it does not matter what your tool is, just find the tools that work for you and then keep using those tools to keep diving. And when you plateau with those tools, use new tools. And that's what a Yoni steam was for me. It was a new tool. You know, I had done all sorts of other stuff to alleviate the tension around my ovarian cyst. And I haven't had an ovarian cyst in well over 15 years once we treated my scar and we did Frankenheusers, which are deep pelvic injections of home of remedies and handled some emotional stuff that showed up around doing those. And, but the reality is that, you know, that's still an area where obviously things get trapped. And just like if you were to stop it, do lymph, excuse me, I'm just going to pause for just a moment. So when, you know, we're looking for the different tools that are out there, you know, what I felt the Yoni steam did to me was it was something different. It was something I'd never been exposed to. And, you know, all plants have a vibration. And so as Katie's, and I want to talk about how she selects those and blah, 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 but, you know, she had selected certain herbs. She put them in a jar, she heated them up, put them in the crock pot, then I sat there with these herbs that just literally steamed up into my vagina and it was like a button and it, it released energy that needles hadn't released, that scar therapy hadn't released, that fascia work hadn't released, that sacral openings from cranial sacrals haven't released. You know, it's just delayering, just getting rid of all the layers, right? Because that's, everything is just a layer. And the best part is you're never going to get it all done, but it gets more and more fun as you keep doing it. Because after that, I felt such relief and so silly. Like, first of all, Katie got to know me really well in that hour. And so I built a great friendship. Um, secondly, 
um, it, it gave me a tool so that if I get stuck again, I know, oh, I can call Katie and she can send this out to me or I can drive because she's close enough for me to drive to and I can go and do one of these sessions. But I want you to understand you don't need any special equipment. You simply can take a couple of yoga blocks, three or four, and you create a stool that protects your privates from being too close to the steam and Katie instructs you through this process. So can you talk a little bit about like you had mentioned before you use chamomile and lavender and like comfy and how do you decide what herbs to use? I know that's part of your training, but could you talk about that a little bit? So with any client, whether we're working face to face, I'm shipping herbs to them. We do an intake and get a better understanding of what their focus is of course, any contraindications, any allergies with the herbs. But then I ask some real specific questions as to where they feel most connected and where they, they don't feel as connected in their body. And the way that it's always answered, it, it can give an indication of if they're answering from their physical body, if they're answering from their emotional or energetic body. And so utilizing all of that, putting together a kit that can be geared towards if we need to bring more lymph flow, herbs that can really benefit in that if there's been a lot of trauma and trauma is a huge piece that when we think the shame the trauma the grief that's stored here what are herbs that really soften the hold that allow the body and the soul to come back together and so all the herbs everything I use fair trade certified organic super clean because it's also really important to keep in mind if you're steaming you're taking in the energetics the physical imprints of these plants, you don't want to have any toxins moving back into your body. And on a side note with that, just as a precaution, if you start to do steaming at home, just be really aware of if you're buying a stool, avoid plastic. I'm seeing more and more plastic stools that mm. people are building that they're selling. And that just counteracts all the benefits because if you're putting these herbs in, you're adding warm water, you're steaming up, you're also taking the residue of the plastic, leaching out, and that's not going to be beneficial for anything. So just making sure everything is cleanly sourced for, for many good reasons with that. Yeah. Um, I have had some clients reach out and say, well, they've made their own yoni blends and they've used essential oils. Essential oils are beautiful as an external tool to integrate whether you're breathing, you're doing a scalp massage, a belly massage, breast massage while you're doing the steam, but they really should be avoided in the steam as well because they're so concentrated, they can be irritating. It's also just important to think about if the body has any underlying concerns of if, if herpes, if there's an active outbreak, the herbs and the heat can be too stimulating, but it's so beautiful to soothe the body pre and post outbreaks. And as we're just, I'm going to just ramble here, but thinking in terms of when we use the steaming as an ally for the body, the one big red flag is if a woman has an IUD and the concern would be as the heat moves up, the IUD is implanted into the cervix. The heat can travel as high as the cervix if it's physically there. If it's been removed, the energetics of the cervix and the nerves do respond, but it can actually dislodge not always, and there's a chance that it can cause some tearing through the vaginal canal. So we just wanna have some precautions as to, okay, what's already happening within the body? Can there be a possibility of any, any flare up, any, but, okay, so adding on, interrupting my own sentence. After a woman has had an IUD removed, the steaming is one of the most nourishing tools she can offer her body for that warmth, for that healing, but to remind the body how it can start to regulate again, I do a lot of work with women when they come off the pill, when they've come off birth control of any sort, because the body has been suppressed for a, a good number of, of months, of years, and it needs some guidance. It needs some support to remineralize, to re-nourish with all the nutrients that the plants can offer. Some are really high, nettle is so high in calcium and iron. And so when a woman's really deficient in that, nettle's a great way to take it in. And then also what I do is I make a steam, a steam blend and then a tea blend. So just like when we treat parasites, we're doing oral and rectal care. Same thing with yoni or lingam steam. You're drinking the herbs as you're, you're steaming through. And then we talk about the aftercare as well, what to follow up for both women and men. 
this can be a very vulnerable tool, a very beautiful opening tool, but it can be very vulnerable where it can make you feel really soft, really tender with emotions. So I always like to guide a time to do a steam when you don't have to jump back on to the outside world, be in technology, be with other people to give yourself that integration, whether you do it before going to bed and just letting your dream space process what move through or a time of the day where again maybe you can spend some time out in nature you can ground you can spend some time by water this area is so fluid it really is our, our water element within the lower belly but with that we ride all the ebbs and flows all the waves of emotions that move through sometimes afterwards if someone wasn't even aware of how much grief how much sadness they had within it can be this purge but from that purge this opening, this clarity can come and move through the body. What's really fascinating when we go into the science behind this, okay, so as I mentioned, the heat can hit all the way up to the cervix. The cervix is connected to the vagus nerve and the vagus nerves help switch the body into a parasympathetic state. When we're in that state, we can digest, we can breathe deeper, we can heal, we can rest. Kelly, it is one of the most amazing things to watch when clients begin a session and just looking at what you said with all the tension we hold in the jaw, the emotional tension. This is our whole story, our whole heartbreak, heart joy, everything is here. But it's also that place, the portal between the lower belly and the jaw. But when we can activate the parasympathetic state, the body can actually feel, it can it can feel safe again, but it can respond. I had a client two nights ago. She came in really stressed. She just came out of work. She could barely walk out of here. <laughs> she just looked so pissed out. But she said, I have not ever felt this relaxed. And so it, it creates this response in the body that we, we chase after that kind of relaxation, right? And this is something that can be very inexpensive. It doesn't take a long time, a half an hour is great longer wonderful but half an hour is really all the time that you need half an hour of presence with your body and magic can transform and how frequent would you recommend if somebody was going to do this at home it depends if you have the tools at home do it as often as you would like there really isn't an upper limit it, it can be a detoxifying tool so just making sure you're staying hydrated you're taking care of any detox responses but when women are addressing maybe through cycle, through fertility, there are certain times that we avoid. So if um, a woman's trying to conceive, we avoid between ovulation and to see if, she's, if she has conceived. Um, but if that's not a focus to help regulate a cycle, she could do it every week and then just taking a pause during those peak days of bleeding. For men, men cycle in their own way. So I like to find a time when we start with the new moon or the full moon, depending on their own responses in their body. If, if a man has a harder time resting around the full moon, this could be a nice way to drop him back into that place of, of softening the body. So it really just varies. So I kind of, I get a better understanding of personalities of, of what we're addressing in the body for that way to begin the, the cycle of, of steaming. I want to talk about in a minute why the moon, but before we get there, uh, digestive issues. You know, we've talked a lot about fertility and reproductive issues and sexual issues and traumas. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the reproductive organs and you just gently spoke about it with the vagal nerve and the jaw and the alignment from the, you know, two portals of the gut and the jaw. But if, if you've dealt with constipation, IBS, you know, um, diverticulitis, uh, hemorrhoids, liver stagnancies, can't mm -hmm. detoxify well, like allowing this steam with the information of the herbs to be saturated in your energy field without having to digest it, without having to, um, it's, it's like instant availability because it's just a frequency. And so it allows the body, it doesn't force the body, it allows the body, but consider this if you've had digestive issues, chronic ones, because as we know, I mean, I wrote the article about digestive disorders, I gotta say 16 years ago out of 18, where we talked about 99% of all digestive issues are emotional. And, you know, if we're holding, like I said to somebody the other day, 
she was a new client and I said something about, well, has this been going on this constipation issue that you've had for however, however many years we talked about in her case, like five, 10 years, she goes, Oh no, no, no. It's been since I was a kid. I'm like, Oh, so you've been holding on to your shit for that long, huh? And she kind of laughed, but that's the reality. And, you know, if we're not pooping, we're holding on to our crap. If we're not draining our lymphatics, we're holding on to our crap. It's all about draining. And what steaming can do is increase our drainage. Did you notice how many times Katie talked about the lymphatic system? Did anybody else hear how many times Katie mentioned the lymph system? <laughs> you know, there's a reason that the three of us are friends <laughs> um, and more than one reason, but talk to us about the moon. Why, why is the moon so important with all of it? Why? Okay. There's so much I want to say with the moon. And then oh, I'm sure. And Alexis is listening with peaked ear, ears about what you're going to say about the moon. <laughs> when we think back to times before technology, before blue light came about, we as women were bleeding with the new moon when there was complete darkness, when there was no light keeping us awake, but it was the time that we were ready to empty. We were ready to go back into our caves. We were ready to cocoon in to nestle, to dream, the time when we were so intuitive, releasing the blood back to the earth and then coming back as the moon becomes brighter and the sky's lighter, our energy starts to become more alive again. And so that was the time of ovulation. That was the time of creative energy, of sexual energy, of really owning our own essence. And that was the time of just enjoying pleasure and then conception leading us back into, okay, how do we come into current day where we are so overstimulated with lights, right? All the time. So cycles are all over the place. And again, I keep referring to cycles, but any woman can do this. We can start as early as a girl begins her first menses all the way through last breath on life here. But now we think of the moon cycle as a, a time where parasitic infections that can cause a disruption. Mainly we see it around the full moon. They are more alive. They're more, uh, they're taking up more space in the body around that time. So steaming is really great as a form of detoxification. When we think of the whole pelvic bowl, a lot of microbes can travel between reproductive organs. Sometimes even parasitic nests are overlooked and they are, they're called cysts, but it's really more the parasites that could be in the fallopian tubes, that can be around the uterus, around the ovaries, but then going back into the digestive system. So if we're, we're focusing on the moon, we can think that could be a time, it could be geared more towards detoxification. Some clients I even see when they have reoccurring UTIs, they have a lot of bacteria, but then also looking at Type A personality is really contracted, really constricted, but there's not a release. We do more focus around the full moon as well because that's such an intensified time in the body. But also then it's just, it's dependent individual to individual, what their toxic load is in their body, what that concern is. If it's candida, candida can spread through every system of the body. And so we can address that anytime. I like to use those two parts of the moon, the full and the new as our, our portals, but then we can anchor all the way through. And then even just looking equinoxes, solstices, and then the four quarters of, of the year as well as maybe starting points to begin a steam ritual of some sort. And why, what, what's unique about those times? Like why is that important in the concept of what we've been talking about with frequency and energy? If you could unpack that a little bit for the audience to get them the community to get them to understand a little bit more about frequency and energy, if you would. Well, that's exactly what we are, right? And we're so, we're so connected. We're so connected with um, our ebbs and flows within our body, but at the solstices and the equinoxes, the way that the sun and the moon line up, it can have a stronger pull on our bodies. It can have a stronger effect. But energetically, it's these times that we're meant to just drop into that space. I'm kind of making these little pie slices because between each of the two, we just we came through the winter solstice. And then last week, we experienced Imbolc, which is the very beginning of February. It's considered the first seed of light. So it's, it's the first light that illuminates us and takes us to the spring equinox. 
winter solstice, spring equinox, in between, that it's that time where we can we can start to feel that light come back into our bodies. And so for many of us, there there's so much stagnant energy that we don't even know how we can flow season to season. So if this could be, like I said, the word ritual to begin that energetic approach. But as we follow the seasons through the year, the four seasons, and then our own seasons, maybe if we're, you know, we're, we're having this conversation during the true winter, we're both on the East Coast, but it can feel quite different if you're in the tropics in, in January, but what is your winter season? We're not fully always alive and feeling this creative space of manifestation and activation. Sometimes it's really that time where we have to be so intentional about going back into that cave, going back into that place to be quiet, to just rest. Rest is such a big piece. And each season teaches us that. The opening, the vibrant fire energy of summer, and then coming back into that harvest where we can reap the benefits. I feel like that was part of your, your experience. We Coming into that harvest, that reflection, but then that opening of, wow, how much bounty is here in my body that I can reflect on, that I can acknowledge through everything she's been through, I can harvest these lessons and take them, take them forward on the path. Yeah, for sure. That was, it was like, she'd been yelling at me for years and I wasn't listening. And I finally listened and it was like, it's okay. You can rest, you can be nurtured. You can. And, and even though I've said that time and time again, the clients for 20 years, and I've said, you're the most important person. And I've been known as a table slut in my days. Um, meaning I will get on pretty much anybody's table if they're willing to treat me. Um, it's changed a lot throughout the years, but it's giving, it's beyond just maintenance of like keeping up with, oh, you know, making sure I'm doing my flow prezos and seeing my chiropractor and do my meditations every day. And it's beyond like the routine of it all. It's more about what you said. It's more about the ritual of it versus the routine of it, you know, and, and the ritual of giving myself what I need. Like I had a, on Sunday, I did stupid human tricks. So there's a few things that I do in my life that I shouldn't do because I forget that, um, you know, proper footing is important and, you know, I'm not 22 and like, you know, there's some realities to the physicality of the body and limitations that I'm not really keen on living with a lot. And so I, if I had done any one of the three things that I had done on Sunday, I would have been potentially dealing with a little low back pain for a day or two, but I did all three of them on Sunday, which was just, you know, brilliant on my part. And then on Monday morning, when I woke up and I was like, kind of like struggling to be flowing, physically flowing, um, we did a little work on my body. A, a colleague of mine did some cranial sacral therapy and I just cried. Like my eyes just like wept. And we both decided that what I needed was, even though I was fully dressed and ready to walk out the door, what I needed was to lay down back in bed and nourish myself. And mm -hmm. I don't know as if I would have made that choice ever before in my life. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I really don't. I, I think that mm -hmm. the best part about Monday was me giving that to myself. The other best part was the fact that I've really grown my imagination and I sat in my bed and imagined this big big, big bear hugging me and just holding me and snuggling with me. Like it was just enveloping me. It was great. And, and, you know, I've had to work with my imagination throughout the years as well, but it, it was just no guilt, no self-talk, no, oh, I should get up now. No, oh, I'm going to, you know, feel bad if I'm laying around. Oh, I should be doing something because Silas is in school. Like none of that. It was just like, Oh, this feels so good. I'm so happy. I can give myself this time. And we had a ton to do that day. And I was just like, none of it's important because if I don't feel good and I had essentially sabotaged my physical body the day before doing things I know I shouldn't do and then was in pain, but it was really about the emotional components of that were driving me to do all those things and the drive of like the drive. It, it was 
the ability to let myself stop driving. And it was, it, you know, what we talked about was there was a pull inside my body and a push and a pull and a push and a pull. And she was like, so maybe you're a little wound too tight. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you think maybe perhaps. And that wounding tight has taken 23 years of me getting better and better at releasing that tension, that internal tension, that internal, because when I listen to it, I'm like, I wouldn't want anybody else. Like I would not be that hard on anybody else as I have found myself in the past being hard on myself. And I've, I'm learning to be softer and I see it in my kid. I see it in with dealing with clients. I see it in dealing with my team members, with my family members that I have in the past been very hard and very, and when I listen, none of that's me. That's this internal tension of feeling this pressure that I've put on myself, releasing that pressure to know that there's plenty of time, there's plenty of space because there's no time, there is no space. It's all in the perfect time. It's all right here, right now. Now is all we have. You know, somebody told, I think it was Seguru who talks about why do you want self, yeah, self-help. Who needs help? Why do you need help? You're perfect. Self-development, I feel different about because it's developing your intuition, developing your relationship with yourself. And I feel that's what Yoni really does is it helps you self-develop. It gives you a step up in regards to your self-development because you're, you've never been in a position before, like you said, to be so relaxed and so in touch, like flow present. I can only imagine, like now I'm like, I want to do a flow present with an Yoni scene because I'm sure it's hard to walk after that at some level because you're so darn relaxed. What a great combo that is. Um, but you know, that, that gift of inner peace mm -hmm. that allows us to feel like we're here. That's it. That's all there is. Yes. Enjoy it. And it's a choice. And what you said that you gave yourself that time on Monday where you just embraced it without forcing yourself to get up and to ignore and basically betray your body for what she needed at that time. And that's, I think, one of the biggest takeaways of just that remembrance. It is a choice to tune within, but to give ourselves that space because from that being, then so much more doing can, and clarity can become clearer within that. It's, it's a reminder that um, through the body, as women, we need to feel safe in our hearts to open through our yonis, not just sexually, but energetically too. And so to choose to take time for self-care, which that could be a whole other conversation, right? That the, the shaming that comes along with that, the guilt that comes along with taking time out for the self-care piece, but when we acknowledge that we are so deserving of it, without explanation, we can open here and then we can hear. And for men, it's a portal where they give themselves the space. Their life force is activated through their sacral center and then it moves up through their heart. So then they could start acknowledging more. So we're working in opposite directions, but it's that energetic place where the heart is is the end all that she opens, she holds, she clears, she transforms, but how much we can, we can respect our bodies. We can raise the level of respect that we have towards our own trust and really acknowledge that when we do give ourselves that space. And then we never know what is yet to be revealed, whether it's, it's a remembrance of all of it, of who we really are meant to be, how we're meant to live, how we're meant to, to thrive and not just get by, which many of us, our society has, as young kids, we are not conditioned to learn about our, the energies that we hold in this, the sacred bowl, but it's coming back to it on our journey of how, what our essence really is and how much it wants to be expressed through the body. The seams are just one, one tool. And like you said, we try out and we keep working with the ones that work. But there are endless ways that we can do that. Um, I'm actually sitting on a massage table right now, and this is when we do the flow prezzo, but it's also a place where after steaming in the office here, we do castor oil packs. And so we apply castor oil over the liver, over the lower belly. Sometimes we use moxa as well, which is mugwort, and that activates the chi, that brings flow back into the body, and then use an infrared heating pad. 
And that way is again, coming back into that heat, but coming back into that receptivity where it's the casseroles are, have endless benefits digestively for endocrine health, for urinary health. And so it's finding a tool, it's working with that and then tuning in. Is this what my body needs right now or is it something else? And that's the biggest, biggest piece that I've, I've really reclaimed on my own journey, what serves me at that time and what I can keep feeding into. And then I say to clients, it's like we're out to dinner together and we have a tasting menu. And should we like things, we go back to them. And then if things don't resonate at that time, we just let them be. And we find that by resonating with ourselves and tapping into our heart, as you said, and opening our heart. And I appreciate that perspective so much because at the Beats with Kelly Kennedy, it's from my heart to yours because I want people to realize that that's the real healing is being connected to self. And you can all hear the effect that Katie has on me. She keeps me very parasympathetic, just even listening to her voice. Like when she, we vox her back and forth or we're like, I hear her voicemail or something. I'm just like, oh yes, I just need to relax a little bit more. Katie just brings me down, which, you know, her website is sun, Katie Sunshine, Sunshine Katie, Sunshine Katie. <laughs> Sunshine Kate, Sunshine Kate. And um, it so embodies who she is. She's just a ball of sunshine and light coming out to like remind you and that beautiful sentiment of remembering that our, our beauty comes from within and that that's the journey is getting the tools to, to utilize that. So Thank you so much. I, I have one more question for you. If there's anything else you want to add, and I want to, first of all, let's talk about where they can find you, how they can find you. What does it look like when they find you? What's that process look like a little bit to give them a perspective on that? And then I have a question and anything else you want to add. Thank you. Thank you. So Sunshine Cakes is my website and you can go right on there. You can email me directly. I have a page dedicated to Yoni and Lingam Health. So you can read more about it. There's some blogs up there about it. And even just going through the shop page and seeing some different products that we integrate along the way. I do work out of um, Red Bank, New Jersey, but I have clients all over so we can, we can do virtual connection. And I actually, every year in the spring, I offer a program, it's called the Radiant Woman Yoni Journey. And so we'll be starting that in late March this year. It's usually right around the spring equinox, but that's a really special time to come together as a group where it's a portal and we get to do our own journey and then come together in connection. This year, I'm opening it up and we're going to be doing a men's program as well this summer, which I'm super excited about because I have, and one reminder, I apologize to any men that are listening that I have, I'm not intentionally ignoring you and addressing more. The Yoni is just where I started from, but I've gone much deeper into men's work and I just value that men are so open, but they so need it as well. And it's just easier for women to, to find the tools, unfortunately. But my dedication and devotion this year is to really open up more space to, to thread that community together with men. Um, I'm very accessible. If you have questions, you can just email along the way. And then I have an Instagram page that you can get a little better taste of my personality through there. It's a, a mix of everything. Um, but I'm, I'm just so grateful that I got to connect with everyone here. And Kelly, thank you for facilitating this. I am beyond grateful our paths have crossed over this journey. Uh, oh, me, me too. And I, and I look forward to doing more things with you than just the retreats. Because I think locally, you know, having you here at the center, we've talked about it. We just need to actually organize it and do it. But we talked about having Kate come like once every couple of months or something and having multiple sessions because I think as well, um, not only Flo Preza, but Sound of Soul in combination with the Yoni work is just key to helping us access those, that inner power, that inner wisdom. And it's a biohack, right? You know, there's just, we're always looking for the ways to biohack to get there. And um, I would love to know when you're ready to launch that program in the spring and the summer, let us know so we can post about it and let everybody have access to that. Cause I think it's beautiful work you're doing and um, I appreciate it so much. And I agree with you. Like we focus so much on the women because I think in this industry it's, you know, well, well, the majority of the takers of holistic alternative, complementary, 
biological, what I would call foundational healing and wellness is primarily taken up by women. But the men, I mean, you know, we're, we're going to talk a lot about men and women and the difference in one of our upcoming uh, podcasts with Alison Armstrong. And we, we've, we have forgotten about our instinctual brilliance and wisdom and the differences and how beautiful those differences are and how to glorify those differences rather than shame. Yes. And, and I just talking to you a little bit previously about the work you were doing with men, I was like, that's absolutely amazing. And so needed because there was a comedian years ago that I and I watched and we were peeing ourselves just about because this comedian is talking about how every woman wants the perfect man you know, the guy that's going to protect them with guns and blazing, and, but also is going to cry, uh, you know, is going to provide for the family, but be very flexible and want to travel. Who's going to, you know, it, it's like that, that doesn't exist. You can't have all that. It's not fair to anybody to want them and expect them to be all of it, no. nor is it for women. And I think we've shined the light, as you mentioned, too much perhaps on women and that there's been this imbalance. And yet we've not given availability to men to open up, to shift and change as we have women. And now it's time for us all to balance out, come together, you know, experience what is different, glorify that instead of shaming for that difference and realize that that's what's awesome about it. We all are different. Exactly. And to celebrate those differences. Yeah. Good Lord. If you were all me, we'd all drive each other crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, the question becomes in all your years and all your wisdom, if you had a microphone today that you could reach all 7.6 billion people that are potentially on the planet right now, what would you like them to know? What's the big secret you would want them to know? That's a beautiful question. The big secret is to know that you are deserving of giving yourself that sacred space to tune within. And that's our birthright. Essentially, that's every single person's birthright, no matter where we live on this planet. And many of us are much more privileged than others. And even just being able to hold that responsibility, that reclamation of our body. But we are all, it is our birthright to know how much we have within us, with that wisdom, with that magic, with that healing, and to claim it and reclaim it forever. And to not forget the worthiness that we all have within that too, because that's something that's forgotten too, that all the chatter up here takes us out of that, that sacred space, that inner healing. Remembering the worthiness. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Well, I I don't, I did something right because I was worthy of having you connect in my life and I'm super, super thankful for it. So thank you for your time, your education, your wisdom, your devotion to the work you're doing and the beautiful, liveliness that you help people find within them. It's absolutely beautiful work. And I hope that all that are listening, take advantage of this wonderful woman and her incredible wisdom. And thank you for paying attention today and, and focusing with us about your Yoni and learning about your Yoni and Linga and a little bit better or different new tools that allow you to access that incredible wisdom within. So any other parting words, Katie? You know, I have one little quote that I'd like to to send us on our way. And with what we just shared about men, we're going to imagine that this says both women and men when you hear the word women. The psyches and souls of women and men have their own cycles and seasons of doing and solitude, running and staying, being involved and being removed, questing and resting, creating and incubating, being of the world and returning to the soul place, and that's by Clarissa Estes, who wrote The Women Who Run With Wolves. It just says that remembrance, that we all have our own cycles, we all have our own seasons, but to, to honor that and to come back to that. And I'm honored that we got to connect here in our winter season to cocoon in and then to open and blossom. So thank you, Kelly. Thank you for everyone tuning in, taking the time and until we meet again. Have a great day, everybody, from our heart to yours. We'll see you next time on The Beats at the True Wellness Center with your host, Kelly Kennedy. Thanks for listening. 
Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of The Beats. And as your host, Kelly Kennedy, truly from my heart to yours, thank you for your time and your attention today. And if this did resonate with you, please do leave some comments. We would love to hear from you. And if this further you think would resonate with somebody that you know, please do go ahead and share that and hit that notification button so you know when The Beats is available to you. We do do some live things every once in a while. And watch out for some of our upcoming events. We have a no release class coming up in the local area here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Ian has a walk coming up. So you can check out some information on our website, the True Wellness Center, about all the details about those upcoming events. Um, and as always, we pray that this information today was not only foundational, but raised some questions for you and helped you be empowered to take actionable, profound steps toward regeneration because your body is the only thing that heals. And that is our message here on The Beats. Thanks again for listening and for sharing. Have a great day.